Hi, this is Lija here. In the last video, we discussed the basic concepts of limbic system. Today, we will focus on the role of limbic system in behavior. First, let us discuss the functions of the major control headquarters of the limbic system, that is the hypothalamus, which plays an important role in controlling thirst, hunger and many of the emotional drives. Stimulation of several areas of the hypothalamus causes an animal to experience extreme hunger, a voracious appetite and an intense desire to search for food. One area associated with hunger is the lateral hypothalamic area. Conversely, damage to this area on both sides of the hypothalamus causes the animal to lose desire for food, sometimes causing lethal starvation. A center that opposes the desire for food called the satiety center is located in the ventromedial nuclei. When this center is stimulated electrically, an animal that is eating food suddenly stops eating and shows complete indifference to food. However, if this area is destroyed bilaterally, the animal cannot be satisfied. Instead, its hypothalamic hunger centers become overactive so that it has a voracious appetite resulting eventually in tremendous obesity. Another area of the hypothalamus that enters into overall control of gastrointestinal activity is the mammillary bodies. This control at least partially the patterns of many feeding reflexes such as licking the lips and so on. Next, let us see the role of hypothalamus in the regulation of body water. The hypothalamus regulates body water in two ways either by creating the sensation of thirst which makes the animal or person drink water or by controlling the excretion of water into urine. An area called the thirst center is located in the lateral hypothalamus. When the fluid electrolytes in either the center or closely allied areas become too concentrated, the animal develops an intense desire to drink water. It will search out the nearest source of water and drink enough to return the electrolyte con concentration of the thirst center to normal. Control of renal excretion of water is vested mainly in the supraoptic nuclei. When the body fluids become too concentrated, the neurons of these areas become stimulated. Nerve fibers from the neurons project downward through the infundibulum of the hypothalamus into the posterior pituitary gland where the nerve endings secrete the hormone antidiuretic hormone which is also called vasopressin. This hormone is then absorbed into the blood and then transported into the kidneys where it acts on the collecting ducts of the kidneys to cause increased reabsorption of water. This decreases loss of water into the urine but allows continuing excretion of electrolytes thus decreasing the concentration of body fluids back to normal. Stimulation in the lateral hypothalamus not only causes thirst and eating but also increases the general level of activity of the animal sometimes leading to overt rage and fighting. Lesions in the hypothalamus in general cause effects opposite to those caused by stimulation. For instance, bilateral lesions in the lateral hypothalamus will decrease drinking and eating almost to zero, often leading to lethal starvation. These lesions also cause extreme passivity of the animal as well with loss of most of its overdrives. Bilateral lesions of the ventromedial areas of the hypothalamus cause effects that are mainly opposite to those caused by lesions of the lateral hypothalamus. Excessive drinking and eating as well as hyperactivity and often continuous savagery along with frequent bouts of extreme range on the slightest provocation. Stimulation of a thin zone of periventricular nuclei located immediately adjacent to the third ventricle also called stimulation of the central gray area of the mesencephalon that is continuous with the portion of hypothalamus usually leads to fear and punishment reactions. 
However, the major reward centers has been found to be located along the course of the medial forebrain bundle, especially in the lateral and ventromedial nuclei of the hypothalamus. Almost everything that we do is related in some way to reward or punishment. If we are doing something that is rewarding, we continue to do it or if it is punishing, we cease to do it. Therefore, the reward and punishment centers undoubtedly constitute one of the most important of all the controllers of our body activities, our drives, our aversions, our motivations. Animal experiments have shown that a sensory experience that causes neither reward nor punishment is hardly remembered at all. If the stimulus does cause either reward or punishment rather than indifference, the cerebral cortical response becomes progressively more and more intense during repeated stimulation instead of fading away and the response is said to be reinforced. An animal builds up strong memory traces for sensations that are either rewarding or punishing but conversely develops complete habituation to indifferent sensory stimuli. It is evident that the reward and punishment centers of the limbic system has much to do with selecting the information that we learn, usually throwing away more than 99% of it and selecting less than 1% for retention. The most potent areas for punishment and escape tendencies have been found in the central gray area surrounding the aqueduct of Sylvius, in the mesencephalon and extending upward into the periventricular zone of the hypothalamus and thalamus. Less potent punishment areas are found in some locations in the amygdala and hippocampus. Strong stimulation of the punishment centers of the brain, especially in the periventricular zone of the hypothalamus and in the lateral hypothalamus, causes the animal to develop a defense posture, extend its claws, lift its tail, hiss, spit, growl and develop piloerection, wide open eyes and dilated pupils. Furthermore, even the slightest provocation causes an immediate savage attack. This is approximately the behavior that one would expect from an animal being severely punished and it is a pattern of behavior that is called rage. Fortunately, in the normal animal, the rage phenomenon is held in check mainly by inhibitory signals from the ventromedial nuclei of the hypothalamus. In addition, portions of the hippocampus and anterior limbic cortex, especially in the anterior cingulate gyri and subcalosal gyri, helps to suppress the rage phenomenon. It is particularly interesting that stimulation in the punishment centers can frequently inhibit the reward centers completely, demonstrating that punishment and fear can take precedence over pleasure and reward. Less potent reward centers which are perhaps secondary to the major ones in hypothalamus are found in the septum, the amygdala, certain areas of thalamus and basal ganglia and extending downward into the basal tegmentum of the mesencephalon. So, stimulation or lesions in other areas of the limbic system, especially in the hippocampus, amygdala, the septal area and areas in the mesencephalon often results in effects similar to those elicited from the hypothalamus. We will discuss it in another video. Thank you for watching this video. Please share and subscribe.